All right, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from the Firestone Walker Brewing Company, and they're out of Paso Robles, California, and this is their XPA. So this is an extra pale ale that comes in at 5% alcohol by volume, 37 IBUs at the time of review. And this can is just over two and a half months old. So this is one of the newest seasonal releases from a Firestone, and it is an XPA, aka an extra pale ale, and there's a bit of conflicting information on their website. They have an article talking about the beer, and then they also have like a page, you know, showing all the information. Well, the article says in the Whirlpool, they're using Idaho 7 and Centennial Hops, and they're dry hopping it with Nelson Sauvin and Mosaic Cryo. And on the page, the Nelson Sauvin and Mosaic Cryo dry hopping, yes. But they mentioned that this one is brewed with Heller Tower Tradition and Citra. So... I don't know which one is right. We'll just go with the article since I think it was um, written on like February 15th and they, you know, kind of go in depth. But regardless, it's an extra pale ale. You don't see an extra pale ale too much here in the States at this point. And uh, yeah, we're going to crack it open and get it into the glass and see what we got going on here. Now, this one did not show up that fresh. It was about two months old, maybe a little bit under two months old when it showed up. And we'll talk about uh, price and availability at the end. But honestly, I never thought we'd see a another Firestone Walker beer here in New York State because there were uh, rumors last year, late last year, that they were going to pull out of New York State as far as distribution goes. So I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. We'll do something like this. Uh, I want to leave a little room for my nose, but uh, that looks, that is a brilliant, clear look to it. Wow. So that's uh, crystal clear. Like this is as light as some adjunct lagers. Like you can totally see my hand through. It has that yellow golden straw color. Uh, like I said, brilliant clarity. Has about almost a two finger of this soap sudsy, but also quite, is that hair? A hair is just flowing around. Okay, and it sucks to the side of my glass. It's actually, yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, anyway, yeah, it has like a soap sudsy kind of um, somewhat creamy look to it. It's bright white. Uh, it looks, this looks absolutely beautiful in the glass. It really does. Hold it up to the light. Yeah, that is amazing looking. Hold up the light, looks like sunshine. And it's in the hashtag, proper glassware. I actually broke the proprietor's um, snifter I had, which is, I haven't been able to buy another one. I've been looking. This is the Barrel Works uh, Tiku, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome. I love this glass, but I also like the proprietor's. It's a little bit smaller. Different shape. I like it. Anyway, nose. Now, again, this isn't super fresh. Just under two months old, it showed up, and now I'm drinking just over two and a half months old. Guess what? For 5% extra pal, really nice nose. Bursting citrus, like zippy, zesty lemon, but a little bit of like a sweeter lemon. Um, sorry, lemon, orange. Um, I don't know why I said lemon. Why would I say lemon? I don't know. There's no lemon. 100% orange. Um, some of that, uh, like white grapefruit as well. Maybe a little bit lemon. Let me let me roll that back. Maybe a little bit of lemon. But it has a beautiful, like, biscuity kind of bready malt character in the nose. There's a touch of, like, a floral grassiness, earthiness. Yeah, like a, a herbaceousness. It's not really dank. It's more like herbaceous, like a spicy herbaceousness, and then a touch of, like, a floral earthiness. There's a little bit of like tropical and stone fruit. Now with Nelson being in the dry hop, a lot of times I'll go right to white grape, white wine, things of that nature. Dare I say gooseberries, Joe Senegal, they exist. I've had them once. But uh, yeah, no, it's um, it, it's not really that Nelson with that, you know, white grape thing going on. It has a little bit of like a passion fruit. Yeah, passion fruit, maybe a touch of berry from the mosaic. But this is very citrus heavy. Oh, hang on. Now I say that, I swirl up, I get sweet berry. For 5%, the aromatics of this one are actually outstanding. Also, I forgot to mention that this won a, I think it was a, was it a bronze or silver? It was either a bronze or silver, but I think it was a bronze medal in the international pale ale category at the 2023 Great American Beer Fest. So that's pretty, pretty high praise. Anyway, yeah, it smells really good. It has a lot of aromatics, but it definitely smells like it's going to be more crushable. And like, it just, this looks like an old school, like, you know, lighter pale ale. That's what it looks like. Anyway, let's get into it. Cheers, everyone. That's really fucking good. Wow. <laughs> you know what this tastes like? It tastes like they tried to make one of these uh, new school West Coast IPAs, but did it at 5% and called it an extra pale ale. It has that vibrancy of 
fruit characters from citrus to stone to tropical. But man, it ha it's such an easy crushable beer, but there is a firm bitterness. Like this is super drinkable. Buying this is like lower side and medium body, 5%. It's nice. The mouthfeel, extremely crisp. Very effervescent on the palate, but it's not overly done. It just, that carbonation dances on the tongue, but it's a very crisp, crisp uh, mouthfeel. It's quite smooth on the palate as well. Right up front, that biscuity, bready malt character hits me, dives underneath the palate with you the entire way. Never steps in the way, but it's always there. Omnipresent for sure. The taste, it kind of, the nose carries over, but I think there's more of that stone and tropical fruit actually on the palate. So a lot of that orange grapefruit, a little bit of like a lemon lime, but again, it runs the gamut of being zesty and pithy in addition to having like a little bit of a sweeter juice quality from all those uh, fruits, more specifically the orange and grapefruit. And midway through the palate, I get a pop of this like, maybe just like slightly under ripened peach and apricot, but then it transitions into the passion fruit, maybe a touch of pineapple and sweeter berry. But those are a bit more subdued, but more noticeable than the nose. It's, this is definitely citrus heavy, but on the back of the palate is that pop of like fresh tropical ju uh, juice that um, a lot of people will get with these new school West Coast IPAs. And this is at 5%. This is a, basically a West Coast uh, extra pale ale is what this is, and I'm digging it. On the finish, finish is semi to full on dry, moderate firm bitterness. Not too sweet to begin with, although with that malt goodness, it has a perceived, like again, fresh, sweet, juicy, tropical character. But this is in no way too uh, sweet. This is actually leans a little bit more bitter and dry than sweet, like 60, 40 with that bitterness and dryness uh, to the uh, sweetness. I'll just be honest with you. I say this like every third or fourth review. I say, I never go into reviews with preconceived notions. Sometimes it's inevitable. inevitable. I was in inevitable. It happens. You start thinking uh, about the beer as you're going into it. I'm thinking it's an X XPA. It's 5%. It's over two and a half months old. How good is this beer going to be? Pretty fucking good. Uh, I can see without question why this won a medal, whether it's bronze or silver. I, I, I think it's bronze, but if it's silver, I'm underselling them. So I'm going to stick with bronze because I think with it. But regardless, that's a cool thing to win a medal at Great American Beer Fest for a beer like this. And I think it's very well earned. I mean, stylistically, you don't see a lot of extra pals, but let's just say overall as a pal out, not my favorite style or anything. This is like a 4.6 out of 5. Like this is fucking incredibly well done. And if you're somebody who likes old school West Coast IPAs, or, or I should say West Coast Pal Owls, but you like that newer school influence nowadays, this is like a hybrid of both. It has a little bit of each. I think the bitterness really pops on this one with that dryness. It makes it infinitely more drinkable. And I could crush many cans of this. It's only 5% and it drinks like it's 6.5 or 7 from the flavor aspect. And that's wild. So Firestone's XPA, I have no issues giving this a high 4.25 I'm go 4.35 this is fucking delicious and I am kind of flabbergasted <laughs> this is as good as it is and maybe I shouldn't be you know why because I love Firestone Walker look behind me on the pretentious wall of bottles and cans and you can see Parabola and Sukaba. I think their barrel program is one of the best in the country and um if not the world and you know some of their base beers um are hit or miss for me like mine haze I reviewed that many years ago one of my more uh, viewed videos I didn't dig it you know it was it was fine for a shelfie IPA but they make other great like their Wookie Jack one of my favorite black IPAs um, even like Union Jack's good. Uh, they make a lot of good beer just in general. And this is one of them. If you see this, pick this one up. So price point availability. Uh, price point, I think I paid like $2.49 for that can. I want to say six packs were in like that $13, $14 realm. Uh, after drinking this, yes. I mean, it's a bit pricey for a 5% extra parallel, but yes. Uh, and I'm sure it's cheaper closer to Firestone Walker. Um, and then availability. Here's what I was talking about at the beginning. Late last year, uh, heard from a couple people that Firestone Walker was pulling out of New York State as far as distribution goes in 2024. Didn't see anything like new from them for a good like four or five months. I'm like, all right, they're gone. Walking to my local favorite, one of my local favorite bottle shops of choice, Premier Gourmet in Amherst, New York. And Ethan, the beer manager there, showed me this and he showed me 2024 Parabola and he's like, yeah, these just showed up. I ordered these a while ago. Here they are. And I'm like, I thought they were pulling out of uh, New York State. And he just goes, I don't know. So I have no idea. Ethan doesn't seem to really know either from like a standpoint of like, are they back? Is this just a one-time thing? Whatever. I hope they're not pulling out of New York State, but if they do, it's going to be a bummer. Hopefully they've reconsidered and say, regardless, 
This is an awesome beer. And if you see it and you get Firestone Walker, check it out. Uh, again, I know I'm kind of you know gushing about a 5% extra pale, but I, you know, this is a fucking great beer. It really is. And I got to be honest about it. And what I'm drinking here is fucking fantastic. And for the style, probably close to world-class, if not world-class. 5%, you can't tell. Man, just has such a nice fruitiness. And I love that I can tell, you know, with a lot of pale ales and uh, lower um, ABV IPAs, I get a little bit of that, you know, uh, malt. And I, I like that biscuity kind of bready malt character. So yeah, anyway, this has won me over. Delicious beer. I'm kind of stumped. But again, I shouldn't be. Firestone Walker brews awesome beers. And that's why you don't go into <laughs> reviews with preconceived notions, Joe. Anyway, if you've had this one before, post it in the comment section. Let me know what you think about it. Kudos to Firestone Walker for making a banger, as, as the kids would say, of an XPA. And hopefully, like I said, they don't pull out of Western New York and New York State in general. Anyway, appreciate it. To the next one. Cheers.